Hello, welcome to Cooking, Cutting Up, and Keeping It Real. It's Janet from Another Planet here filling in for Lisa as she recovers from her knee surgery. This afternoon or early evening here in Nova Scotia, I want to say welcome to all the viewers who view us from all around the world. I'm not sure if you realize it, but in the tech position that I normally am in with this Facebook page for the last two and a half years, I will tell you that Lisa is viewed in 45 countries in 47 languages. So, welcome, welcome, bienvenue, bienvenido. I don't know if I have any more languages than that, but it's um, an opportunity right now to extend that greeting to everybody. We really get excited when we see how far this kindness and this atmosphere and the sharing amongst everyone and everyone's contributions has spread. Speaking of which, this afternoon I am drinking uh, the next version of my water mixture. There were some great suggestions that came on yesterday. I saw one in particular that I can hardly wait to try the next time I have some watermelon. It was watermelon basil blueberry or something. There were a few of them in the comments, but I'll show you this afternoon. I've got blueberry, basil, and mint on the go, and I don't know, just changes it up, right? It gives a little flavor when you're trying to get your ice water going and, and get that in you on a hot day. Plus, it wets my whistle while I'm talking. <laughs> so, oh yeah, that is good. Um, this afternoon I'm making muffins, and the thing about muffins is that there are about six different recipes already available pretty much at your fingertips. So I want to refer to those. A couple are in the cookbooks, but most of them are online in video format. So I was picking these up and reminding myself of um, what's in these cookbooks. So in the first cookbook, for those who like to have the typed version right in their hands, that cookbook, Mama's Always Right, with the 50 recipes in it that are good for starting cooks or anybody really that has got Mimi's banana bread muffins in it so you've got your 50 recipes there and that would be Lisa's mother Diane I believe whose recipe is in here and I think there's also a video version of that on the Facebook page and then in the second cookbook picking it up here Granny's Farm to Table it's the third one down, and it is banana chocolate chip muffins. I feel like that's on the vlog, too. All you've got to do is go up to the search bar at the top and type in cooking, cutting up. You don't even need the whole name. And then whatever food you're looking for. So I put muffins in, and I'll tell you what came up when I did that a few minutes ago. There was chocolate cream cheese surprise muffins, pumpkin chocolate chip muffins, banana bread muffins. There you go. Uh, and I also saw some comments about people doing Weight Watcher versions or some viewers who added their recipes in. There were comments about peach cobbler muffins, so I changed my search and put all of that. Cook and cutting up peach cobbler muffins and that came up. So there are ways. There's sausage and cheese muffins. Those would be a little bit different than the others probably. So uh, when I was growing up, I always thought of muffins as a, something with more fiber in it than like a cupcake. And I think that so many of our muffin recipes today have become more cake or dessert-like. And so today I wanted to try to do one that's mm, got a little bit of each in it. So I'm doing a cornmeal muffin. Now Lisa has a couple of different cornmeal recipes on the vlog and one is a cornbread that's done in the cast iron frying pan like her grandmother did and is in this book and it's, there's a cute story about feeding the dog some cornbread every day and I love it. Uh, there's a more modern version of some kind of a recipe along those lines as well that she's done. If you search cooking cutting up cornbread you're going to get more than one style of making that. So I'm going to do muffins because that's what was always done in my family with cornmeal. 
So I have already gotten ingredients on the go and started and all that kind of stuff so that I could just run through some of this with you. I will tell you what I put together. And I, you know, I keep looking at my little cheat, cheat, cheat list here. So uh, you can see the packages there behind my shoulder of the things that I used. But I have got seven eighths of a cup of flour. So half a cup of flour plus six tablespoons of the sifted all-purpose flour. Instead of using a quarter cup of sugar, I used a quarter cup of medjool dates and just snipped them. They had the pits in them. I just snipped the outsides of them off with the scissors in little bits. And then I decided I need to oomph that up even more, so I put some orange rind, a couple drops of lemon juice and orange juice on top of that orange rind to, to have some great flavor in it. I put four teaspoons of baking powder, and then I had a half a teaspoon of salt. So all of that gets combined. That would be the flour and the sweet things, the dates and the orange rind with the little drops of juice on it, and the baking powder and the salt. You combine that all together. So that is what I have done um, in this bowl. And I kind of just kept stirring around until all my dates were dispersed in the dry mixture so that they weren't all clumped together. They'd be spread out. And then in another bowl, I got these things together. I had an egg that had already been beaten. I had a cup of milk. And I had a quarter cup of butter. And it's salted butter. So I had cut back on my uh, measurement and used that half teaspoon of salt instead of a three-quarter teaspoon of salt. So if you wanted to use a, a shortening instead of the butter, or if you wanted to use an unsalted butter, you could make those adjustments back and forth with what's going on with your salt amount. Uh, so I combined the egg, the milk, and the butter together, and that is in this bowl. And now I am going to add my cornmeal in. So I have got a cup of cornmeal right here. So let me tip the camera down so you can see my bowls and what's going on. And here we go. You can see on the stove here that I've got the silicone muffin tins which you can either spray, which is what I did with the olive oil to grease them up a little bit, make the muffins release better, or you can put the, the paper liners in it. I've got my oven at 400. It's going to cook for 20 to 25 minutes and make about 10 medium muffins. So here we go now. Down, 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 down. And I am going to get these things put together. These three comp things combined. So I'm going to be putting in, I think I'll just put my cornmeal in here in the uh, dry bowl. Stir that around. And when I combine it with the wet, you don't need to have it fully um, blended. It can be lumpy. That's kind of the desired texture that we're going to go for is lumpy when it's all mixed together. So there we go. Liquid over there. All of this. And there we go. So I think that combination of date and orange flavor is going to be good. And then the cornmeal is going to make it have some texture and you know, there's for me no no real sugar. That's that's good when I can cut back on that. Sometimes I have things with it in it. Oh, this is a nice muffiny kind of feeling. This combination. So yeah. Oh, that's feeling really good. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now the secret is don't overdo it. It the I can't see any more dry really, and so. It's ready to go into the muffin pan. And I can move that over on camera here. And let's see. Maybe I'll try to do it with um, a spoon combination and see what I get. 
Yep. There we go. It's interesting learning all the things from this side of the camera as much as I teach video making when you put yourself on on the camera and you're trying to play with the camera angles and the lighting and the time of day and yeah it's uh, a lot that Lisa juggles all the time it takes practice but with her being at it for seven years over seven years it's um it's no wonder she's got it smooth and so relaxed every time she goes on I'm going to have to tell my students this September what I've been up to. Putting my money where my mouth is, I guess. All right. So everybody's oven is different, and the recipe is uh, 20 to 25 minutes. But, um, you know, I'll be checking them and see what mine does. If I don't manage to fill all of these, then I will put water in the one that has nothing in it. And then we will wait it out and get a picture when they come out so you can see what the finished product looks like. Lisa and I are enjoying these new aspects of Facebook lately where we can do these premieres because it is, they have finally simplified things for us to be able to get those final photos easily combined into the, the videos that has been um, a high demand to try to do both. So there just hasn't been an option without any extra staff. And Lisa working as a one-person show, uh, we haven't ventured that direction very much. But now... There's all kinds of new things to play with. So it makes it easier for all of us, especially for you, to find the pictures of what things look like when we're done. All right. That one might be a little tiny one, but that's okay for me. I'm all about that. Clean up this mess around here where I spilled. And there we go. So hoping this is going to make a nice little sweet Swedish treat for me this evening and I'll get those put in the oven. Those are the cornbread date orange rind muffins. Thanks for watching everybody. Catch you again soon. Bye bye.